Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks Summit here in San Jose, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobelius. We're joined by Rob Bearden. He is the CEO of Hortonworks. So thanks so much for coming on theCUBE again, Rob. Thank you for having us. So you just got off of the, the keynote on the main stage. The big theme is really about modern data architecture. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have this modern data architecture what is it all about? How, how do you think about it? What's your approach and how do you walk customers through this, this process? Well, there's a lot of moving parts in, in, in enabling a data architecture. You know, one, of the, one of the first steps is, what we're trying to do is unlock the, the siloed transactional applications. And to, and to get that data into a central architecture so you can get real-time insights around the inclusive data set. Um, but what we're really trying to accomplish then within that modern data architecture is to bring all types of data, whether it be real-time streaming data, whether it be sensor data, IOT data, um, whether it be data that's coming from a, a connected car across the network, and to be able to bring all that data together in real time and give the, the, um, the enterprise the ability to be able to take best in class action so that you get a very prescriptive outcome of what you want. So if we bring that data under management from point of origination and out on the edge and then have the platforms that move that through its entire life cycle and that's our HDF platform, gives the, uh, the customer the ability to, after they capture it um, at the edge, move it and then have the ability to process it as an event happens, a condition changes, uh, various conditions come together, have the ability to process and take the, the exact action that you want to, to see performed against that and then bring it to rest and that's where our HDP platform comes into play where then all that data can be aggregated so you can have a holistic insight and uh, have real time interactions on that data. But then, and to it, it then becomes about deploying those data sets and workloads on the tier that's most economically and architecturally pragmatic. So if, that, if that's on-prem, we make sure that we were architected for that on-prem deployment, or private cloud, or even across multiple public clouds simultaneously, and give the enterprise the ability to support each of those native environments, and so we think hybrid cloud architecture is really where the vast majority of our customers today and in the future are going to want to be able to run and, and deploy uh, their applications and workloads. And that's where our data plane service offering uh, gives them the ability to have that hybrid architecture and the architectural attitude to move workloads and data sets across each tier transparently to, to you know, where that, what storage uh, file format that may be or where that application is, and we provide all the tooling uh, to mask the complexity from, from doing that. And then we ensure that it has one common security framework, one common governance through its entire life cycle, and one management platform to handle um, that entire life cycle of data. And that's the modern data architecture, is be able to bring all data under management, all types of data under management, and manage that in real time through its life cycle until it comes at rest and deploy that across whatever architecture tier is, is most appropriate financially uh, and from a performance on cloud or prem. Rob, this morning on, at the keynote here in day one at DataWorks San Jose, you presented this whole uh, architecture that you described in the context of what you call hybrid clouds to enable connected communities and with HDP, Hortonworks Data Platform 3.0 is one of the prime announcements, you brought containerization into the story. Could you connect those dots, containerization, connected communities, and HDP 3.0? Well, HDP 3.0 is, is really the, the foundation for enabling that, that hybrid architecture natively. And what it's done is it's separated the storage from the compute. And so now we have the ability to deploy those workloads via a container strategy across whichever tier makes the most sense and to move those, those application and data sets around um, and, and to be able to, to leverage each tier in the, in the deployment architectures 
that are most pragmatic. And, and then what that lets us do then is be able to bring all of the different data types, whether it be customer data, supply chain data, product data. So you imagine you know, as a, uh, an industrial piece of equipment is, is you know, an airplane is flying it uh, from Atlanta, Georgia to London, and you want to be able to make sure you really understand how well is that each component performing, so that if that plane's going to need service when it gets there, it doesn't miss the turnaround and leave 300 passengers stranded or delayed. Right uh, now, with uh, with our with our connected platform, we have the ability to take every piece of data from every component that's generated and see that in real time and let the let the airlines make data that lineage, real time. essentially. And, yes. and ensure that we know every person that touched it and looked at that data through its entire life cycle from the ground crew to the pilots to the operations team um, to the service folks on the ground to the reservation agents. And we can prove that if somehow um, that uh, that data has been breached, that we know exactly at what point it was breached and who did or didn't get to see it, and can prevent that because of the security models that we put in place. And that relates to compliance with mandates such as the Global Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, in the EU. At DataWorks Berlin a few months ago, you laid out, Hortonworks laid out, a, a announced a new product called the Data Steward Studio to enable GDPR compliance. Can you give our listeners now who may not have been following the Berlin event, a bit of an update on Data Steward Studio, how it relates to the whole data lineage or set of requirements that you're describing. And then going forward, what, are, what is Hortonworks' roadmap for supporting uh, the full governance life cycle for the connected community from data lineage through like model governance and so forth? If you yeah. could just connect a few dots, that would be helpful. Ab absolutely. But, you know, what, what's important certainly driven by GDPR is the, is, is the requirement to be able to prove that, that you understand who's touched that data and, and who has not had access to it. Uh, and that you ensure that, uh, that you're in compliance with the GDPR regulations, which are significant, but essentially what they say is you cannot, uh, you have to protect the personal data and attributes of that data um, of, of the individual. And so what's very important is that you've got to be able to have the systems that not just secure the data, but, but understand who has the accessibility at any point in time that you've ever maintain that individual's data. And so it's not just about when you've had a transaction with that individual, but it's the rest of the, the history that you've kept or the multiple data sets that you may try to correlate to try to expand your relationship with that customer. And you need to make sure that you can, you can ensure not only that you've secured their data, but then you're protecting and governing who has access to it and when, and, and as importantly, that you can prove in the event of a breach that you had control of that and who did or did not access it. Because if, if you can't prove in a breach that it was secure and that no one breached it who was, or, or accessed it that was not supposed to, you can, you can be opened up for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or even multiple millions of dollars of fines just because you can't prove that it was not accessed. And, and that's what the variety of our platforms, you mentioned Data Studio, um, is part of um, Data Plane is, is one of the capabilities that gives us the ability. The, the core engine that does that is Atlas and that's the open, system, or open source governance platform that we developed through the community that really drives all the capabilities for governance that, that, that moves through each of our products, mm -hmm. HDP, HDF, then of course in Data Plane, and Data Studio takes advantage of that and how it moves and replicates data um, and manages that process for us. Yep. One of the things that we were talking about before the cameras were rolling was this idea of, of 
data-driven business models, how they are disrupting uh, current contenders, new rivals coming on the scene all the time. Can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing and what are some of the most exciting and, and maybe also some of the most threatening things that you're seeing? Sure. You know, in the, in the traditional legacy enterprise, it's very procedural driven. You know, you think about, you know, classic and core ERP. It's, a, it, it, it's worked very hard to have a very rigid, very structural, procedural order to cash cycle that has not a great deal of flexibility. And it, you know, you, you, it, it takes through a design process um, that builds product, that then you sell product to a customer, and then you service that customer, and then you, you, you learn from that transaction uh, different ways to automate or improve efficiencies in your supply chain. But it's very procedural, very linear. And in the new world of connected uh, data models, and, and you want to bring transparency and real-time understanding and connectivity between the enterprise, the customer, the product, and the supply chain and that you can take real-time best in practice action. So, you, so for example, you, you understand how well your product's performing. Is your customer using it correctly? Are they frustrated with, with that? Are they using it in the patterns and the frequency that they should be if they are going to expand their use and buy more? And if they're not, how do we engage in that cycle? How, how do we understand if they're, they're going through um, a, a re-review and, and another buying of something similar that may not be with you for a different reason. You know, and when we have real-time visibility to our customers' interaction, understand our product's performance through its entire life cycle, uh, then we can bring real-time efficiency with linking those together with our supply chain into the various relationships we have with our customers. To do that, it requires the modern data architecture of bringing data, it, data under management from the point it originates, whether it's from the product or the customer interacting with, with the company or the customer interacting potentially with our ecosystem partners, mutual partners, and then letting the, the, the best in practice supply chain uh, techniques make sure that we're, we're bringing the highest level of service and, uh, and support to that entire life cycle. Um, and, and when we bring data under management, manage it through its life cycle and have the historical view at rest and, and, and leverage that across every tier, that's when we hit, get these high velocity, deep transparency and connectivity between each of the constituents in the, in the value chain. Mm -hmm. And that's what our platforms give them the ability to do. Now with your platform, you, you guys have been in business now for I think seven years or so, and you you shifted from being in the, the minds of many, and including in your own strategy, from being the premier data at rest company in terms of a Hadoop platform to being one of the premier data in motion companies. Is sure. that really where you're going to be more of a, a completely streaming focused solution provider in a multi-cloud environment? Because I hear a lot of Kafka in your story <laughs> now that sure. it's like, oh yeah, that's right, Hortonworks is big on Kafka. Can you give us a, just a quick sense of how you're making that shift towards low latency, real time streaming, big data or small data for that matter with embedded wow. analytics and machine learning? Yeah. So, um, we, we, we have evolved from certainly being uh, the, the leader in global data platforms for uh, with, with all the work that we do collaboratively in and through the community to make Hadoop an enterprise viable data platform uh, that has the, the ability to run mission critical workloads and apps at scale, um, ensuring that it has all the enterprise abilities from security and governance and management. But you're right, we, we have expanded um, our footprint aggressively, and we saw the opportunity to actually create more value for our customers by giving them the ability to ex not wait till they bring data under management uh, to gain an insight. Because in that case, they're, they're having to be reactive, post-event, post-transaction. We want to give them the ability to shift their business model to being interactive, pre-event, pre-condition. The way to do that, we, we learned, was to be able to bring the data under management from the point of origination 
and that's what we use MiniFi and iFi for, and then HDF to move it through its life cycle, and to your point, take prescriptive, you know, we, we, we have the analytic, we have the insight, and then we have the ability then to process the best in class outcome based on what we know the variables are we're trying to solve for. And there's a word, the happening. phrase ACID, which of course is a transactional data uh, paradigm plan. I hear that all over your story now in streaming, so uh, you know, what you're saying is it's, it's a, a completely enterprise grade streaming environment from end to end for the new era of edge computing. Is that, would that, that be a that, fair that's, way of That's very much so, and then, yeah. you know, and our, and our model and strategy has always been bring the other best in class engines for what they do well for their particular data set. A couple of examples of that, one you brought up, Kafka, another, is, is uh, um, Spark. And they, they do training. what they do really well. But what we do is make sure that they fit inside an overall data architecture that then embodies um, their access to a much broader central data set that goes from point of origination to point of rest on a whole central architecture and then benefit from our security governance and operations model being able to manage those engines. So what we're trying to do is eliminate the silos for our customers and having siloed data sets that just do particular functions. We give them the ability to have an enterprise modern data architecture, we manage um, the things that bring that forward for the enterprise that to have the the modern data driven business models by bringing the governance the security the operations managers ensure that those workflows go from beginning to end seamlessly here, go ahead. So I was just going to ask about the customer concerns. So here you are, you've now given them this ability to make these real-time changes. Um, how, what, what's, what's sort of next? What are, what are their be, what's on their mind now and what, what do you see as the future of what, what you want to deliver next? Right. Well, first, you know, first and foremost, we got to make sure we get this right. And you know, we really bring this modern data architecture forward and, and, and make sure that we truly have you know, the governance correct, the security model's correct, you know, one pane of glass to manage this, and, and, and really enable that hybrid data architecture and let them leverage the cloud tier where it's architecturally and financially pragmatic to do it and give them the ability to leg into a cloud architecture without risk of either being locked in or uh, misunderstanding where the lines of demarcation of workloads or data sets are and not getting the, the economies or efficiencies they should. And we saw that with, with data points. So we, we're, we're working very hard with the community, with our ecosystem and strategic partners to make sure that we're, we're enabling the ability to bring each type of data from any source and deploy it across any tier with a common security governance management framework. So, then what's next is, now that we have this high velocity of, of data through its entire life cycle on one common set of platforms, then we can start enabling the modern applications to function. And we can go look back into some of the legacy technologies that are, that are, that are very procedural based and, and, and are, are dependent on a transaction or an event happening before they can run their logic to get an outcome because that, that, that grinds the customer in post world activity. We want to make sure that we're bringing that kind of, for example, supply chain functionality to, to the, the modern data architecture so that we can put real time inventory allocation based on the patterns that our customers go in and either how they're using the product or frustrations they've had or success they've had and, and we know through artificial intelligence and machine learning that there's a high probability not only they will buy or use or expand their, their uh, consumption, whatever that they have of our product or service, but it will probably lead to these other things as well if we do those things. Predictive correctly. logic as opposed to procedural, yes, AI. And uh, very, very much so. And so it'll be bringing those that, you know, what's next will be the modern applications on top of this 
that become you know, very predictive and enable versus very procedural post-event, post-transaction. We're a little ways downstream. That's uh, that's looking out. That's next year's that's conference. A, yeah, that's probably next year's <laughs> well, conference. Well, Rob, thank you least. so much for yeah. coming on theCUBE. It's always a pleasure yeah. to have you. Thank you all both for having us, and thank you for being here and enjoy the uh, summit. We're excited. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jim Kobielus. We will have more from DataWorks Summit just after this.